Hi, I'm Kelsey Mays for Cars.com. Volkswagen redesigned the Beetle for 2012, and a year later we got a redesigned Beetle convertible, complete with a power cloth top and three available engines. The Beetle convertible is always kind of placed style ahead of practicality or driving fun, and the redesign doesn't really do much to change that direction. We'll show you why. We have a car with a base five-cylinder engine that pairs with a standard automatic transmission. The Beetle convertible kind of retains the hardtop's lengthy profile, and it's about six inches longer than the outgoing Beetle convertible. The top doesn't require you undoing any latches to bring it down. Uh, it actually goes down, we got it down in about 11 seconds and back up in about 15, including getting the windows up. That's very fast. Uh, you get it down in the end, and there's a boot here that straps into place pretty easily to keep things tidy and back. Unfortunately, it does take up a lot of your view out the rear view mirror. Uh, if you put it up as well, the rear window, pretty tiny as well. You know what else is tiny? The trunk opening. Overall cargo volume is about seven cubic feet. That's a little less than half of what you get in the trunk of the Beetle hardtop, but still pretty competitive, bigger than trunks in cars like the Mini Cooper convertible, the Fiat 500 Cabrio, and the top stows in a separate compartment, so it doesn't intrude on any trunk space when it's down. Unfortunately, that opening still very narrow, very short, requires some angling to get your suitcases through, and the top, the way it opens here, if it's been raining, directs any extra rainwater straight into the trunk. Hope you like your groceries wet. There's a lot of eye candy inside, things like painted panels along the dashboard and upper doors, uh, real metal for the door handles, um, the handle for the upper glove compartment, kind of nice there, but it gives way to some lesser quality farther down, areas that your arms and your elbows fall along, lots of hard, kind of cheap plastic there, uh, climate controls feel kind of flimsy, one editor noted, not great stuff in that area. Despite there being a telescoping steering wheel with actually quite a bit of range, more than one editor found that you're either sitting too far away from that wheel with it all the way extended, or when you move up to get the wheel comfortable, you're sitting too close to the pedals. Uh, the ergonomic issues kind of go on. There's no center armrest in our car. It's optional in the Beetle convertible, despite this car starting at more than $25,000. Uh, we don't have lights for the vanity mirrors up here. Uh, the visors don't extend at all. A lot of issues. The driving experience also seems to fall short of the price tag. Editors agreed the squishy brakes don't lend much confidence, and on the highway, the steering is this soupy, over-assisted mess. The car rides firm in a clumsy sort of way with a busy suspension and more creaking from the top than an old house on Halloween. Speaking of noise, there's a lot of it, especially with traffic passing you nearby on the highway with the top up. It feels like there's a window that's been cracked open. The convertible weighs about 200 pounds more than an equivalent hardtop, and the five-cylinder engine has a tough time keeping up with that sometimes, especially combined with a six-speed automatic that feels like an old-school six-speed automatic from a few years ago. Too many gears to choose from, can't make up its mind. The Beetle Turbo or Beetle TDI, the diesel version, uh, convertibles might solve some of those issues, but we can't help but think that this car feels a little bit short on refinement, especially given its price range. Some shoppers may not care, but consider the competition, other convertibles priced in the same range as the Beetle convertible, because cars don't need to sacrifice quality, um, practicality, and drivability just for the sake of attraction, and unfortunately, it seems like this Volkswagen does a lot of that.